Welcome students, I'm Mr. Boscherini and for this unit on forces and motion today's lesson will be about velocity. In our previous lesson we discussed what is speed. Now in physics speed and velocity they do not mean the same thing. They are related but there is a slight difference between what these two uh, terms mean. In order to understand this difference, we should look at the two sentences which are written on the whiteboard. Felix is moving at 340 meters per second. Felix is falling at 340 meters per second. Now, apparently, these two sentences are saying exactly the same thing. They're both dealing with Felix who is moving, is traveling at a very high speed. Actually, this is the speed of sound. But one of these two sentences is actually giving me an extra information because the first sentence is just telling me what is the speed of Felix. So you have a number and a corresponding unit. While the second one not only is giving me the speed of Felix, is also telling me in which direction Felix is moving. When you have this extra information, in physics we say that we're dealing with velocity. In fact, in physics, velocity is defined as speed with direction. So you have an extra information. Velocity is telling you something more. In order to understand better the difference between speed and velocity, let's see another two sentences. The first one, I'm driving at 80 km per hour. That's speed, again, because I have a number, corresponding unit, and that's it. While the second sentence, I am sailing at 5 km per hour, and E, where NE stands for Northeast, is actually telling me something else. He's telling me how fast I'm going, but also where and which way I'm going. And that is what we call velocity. Now, quantities like uh, velocity, which are defined not only by a number and the corresponding unit, but also by direction, are called vectors. A vector is a quantity that has a value, and that value is called the magnitude, so how big it is, as well as a direction. And quantities like velocities or vectors are usually represented with an arrow, where the arrow points towards the direction and how long the arrow is, is a measure of the magnitude, so the value of this vector. So for instance, if you imagine that this is a, 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 the arrow representing a, a given velocity, this is the direction of the velocity, and the length of this arrow is a measure of the speed, so how big this velocity is. Quantity. Uh, that quantities like speed, which on the other hand are defined by just the number, the corresponding units, then these are called scalars. While quantities like velocity, which are defined by a number and a direction, are called vectors. Are speed and velocity the only representatives of these two categories? Let's see. Here are some examples. Uh, some of these physical quantities we already encountered, and now let's see that we'll see that some of them are scalars and some of them are vectors. For instance, mass, you know, that is the amount of matter in, in an object, and that doesn't have a direction, therefore, mass is a scalar, as well as time or temperature or the volume of an object. These are all scalars. They're just given by a number and the corresponding unit. On the other hand, we will see that when we define force, it's very important not only to say how strong a force is, 
but it's very important in order to understand the effect of a force to say in which direction this force is applied. Therefore, force is a vector. In the same way, weight, which is actually an example of force, is a vector. And as we'll see very soon, even acceleration is a vector. So, what was the learning goal of this lesson? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to differentiate, that means to distinguish between speed and velocity. So, not only you should be able to tell when something is speed and when something is velocity, you should be able to distinguish one from the other. Next, we will see what happens when speed and or direction change. That means when velocity changes, and that is what we call acceleration, and then we're going to see how to represent the movement of an object by using motion graphs.